okay uh, please uh, maybe please type in the chat box if you can hear me just to test can you hear me okay let all the students join in okay great abdullahi thank you Okay, let me share my screen while others are joining. Oh, let me just check on the phone. Where's my phone? Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yeah, please go and mute if you're not speaking or you know I have a question. I will admit I am entering all the students and then uh, you know the ones that have uh, logged in and then we can start I'm sharing my screen also. Today we will have the first session on the emerging technologies. I'm really excited about this one. Hope you guys are also excited. Audio behar tanya. Lagi ya yang mau nanti. Kesal. Okay, uh, maybe just one more minute and then we can start. I'll just give one more minute for students to join in. Okay, then let's start. I think as more students join in, I will sort of, you know, uh, make sure they are um, admitted into the uh, into the meeting. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. So we this is the this is the the second, uh, you know, one of the other courses in the sem in this semester called Emerging Technologies. Um, and oh, I see it here, Emerging Technologies, and I think. Um, you know we've this is the first lecture for it um and i will share a bit more about you know what we will cover cover in this course and then um also today we will actually dive into four uh four different emerging technologies as an introduction so just so that you know we'll see how much do we understand about it um and there'll also be a bit of an assignment for next class Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Maybe you can quickly type uh, that you you can see my screen. Then I I am comfortable that everybody is hopefully can everybody can see my screen. Okay, perfect. Ismail, thank you, Ismail, for sharing. Um, okay, I will try to keep coming back to add more students as they sort of join in. So, um, yeah. So it's a, it's the first lecture on emerging technologies, and so we'll talk a little bit about. You know, what do we mean by emerging technologies? Why is it important? Um, you know, and then, like I said, we will dive into um, four different uh, emerging technologies uh, in, in, in today's class, and then another two or three in the next class. So this is a bit of an overview I have for this course, the whole course. So, you know, the first two lectures, we will mostly focus on just looking at some of the latest technologies and just understanding, you know, do we understand them? What does it actually mean? Like, what is blockchain? What does it actually mean? You know, 
we have examples of blockchain, etc. So the first two lectures we'll spend on that, uh, touching on different uh, technologies, and then and then after that, based on all the feedback from all of you, uh, we will actually dive into the data analytics part. And the data analytics part is where we'll actually also do some hands-on. Um, I would say some hands on um, you could say data analytics ourselves and and uh, again I would highlight if you've not had a chance you know this is the portal which you should look at for those um, uh, classes which will start after the second class so this one I'm just highlighting it so there's a Microsoft portal we will use this uh, there's a there's a like a you know different types of hands-on uh, uh, activities on it, which we will actually do, and I, I will share a bit more of the a bit more yes, of the sir. details. Yes, sir. So don't don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll share a bit more of the details as well. Um, yeah, please go on mute if you don't have a question. If you have a question, please, of course, you know, ask that. Uh, so so that's the portal we will use for the remaining six lectures. Um, but yeah, the first two are mainly about uh, getting to know different kinds of technologies, and then. Um, the timing of this course will now be uh, this time, so Sundays from 4 to 5 p.m., uh, you know, uh, Mogadishu time, so Somalia, Somalian time, 4 to 5 p.m. Every Sunday, we will have emerging technologies, and every Wednesday, for some of you who may have also had the, you know, the been part of the uh, class earlier this week, every Wednesday, we will talk about information strategy, and every Sunday, we will talk about emerging technologies. So that's how I will split it. Um, let me see. Hopefully, everybody's in. Um, okay, then for the, I'm just already sharing the assignment at the end of the class. So just as a, you know, as a reminder. So we will learn about four different technologies. I think, uh, you know, in this class, in the introduction section. And then I would like you to read the links. There are going to be links for each of those that will be there as as we go through it today. I would like you to explore the link more. Um, you learn about these technologies a little bit more on yourself as well before the second class. And then you need to think about some applications of these technologies um, for the next class. It's not for today, but for the next class. So it's just, I just always bring it up so that you're, you're you know, um, yeah, proactively looking at what would be the assignment for the next class. Okay, so let's start. Um, yeah, emerging technologies. It's, it's actually, uh, it's, it, this is about like all the latest technologies that are happening and you know growing in the world right so uh, there's a lot that is happening um and and i think it's 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 really important as a information management master students to understand and also to be able to you know um uh, yeah, have a good understanding of what these new technologies are how do they benefit a company or a country or let's say you know how can it benefit people and what are some of the examples? You know, how can we maybe learn more about it? If you want to learn more about any of the technologies, you know, where can we go? Where can we learn more, et cetera, et cetera. And so the first thing to notice is that, you know, technology development is happening at exponential rate. And what it means by exponential is that it is not a linear graph, meaning, you know, it is not, it is not going like this. So it's not like you have a, you know, you're sort of increasing in your um, speed. I mean, it's a, go a good example is, let's say, your typing speed. So when you're kids, you know, you sort of learn to type on the keyboard. Um, and so, you you know, you, you can keep working a few years on this and your typing speed will go up, but it's kind of going to go up linearly. So it's just going to go up linear, which is, you know, uh, small incre increments uh, over time. But the rate of technology development today is exponential, meaning, you know, it almost doubles every few years. That's how you have to think. So it's not linear, it's actually exponential. So if, if something is today two, let's say two units, you know, tomorrow is going to be four units, next day is going to be eight units, the day after is going to be 16 units, that's called exponential growth. So it's just going to grow at super fast speed. And that's what you're seeing today with, let's say, all kinds of uh, developments, whether it is cloud computing, we will talk about cloud computing, whether it is blockchain, whether it is internet of things, you know, whether it is automation. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about this. Um, 
yeah and 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 hopefully you can recognize most of the companies that you see uh, the logos that you see on the screen you know, they're all sort of you know um uh, companies that are um let's say supporting and working on um significant technology development right so maybe um uh, maybe some examples of you know can you give me an example of some of the latest technology so what what can you see on the screen here and what kind of examples come to your mind you can type or you can speak up to you guys some some examples of latest technologies right so for example um yeah think about it what what would you consider the latest technology i mean internet has been around for 20 more 30 years so internet is not really latest But maybe you can say, hey, video calling on internet, that's latest, even that was not there, um, you know, 20 years ago. You know, it was not there even 10 years ago. Well, maybe it was there 10 years ago, but now it is much better, much faster. You know, the Zoom, the technology of video conferencing over internet, you know, not needing a telephone uh, connection. You know, you don't need a telephone connection to actually call anybody anywhere. You don't need to dial in their number uh, and the country code and the state code or whatever, you know, the whole number, you can just call anybody anywhere in the world if they have internet. That technology didn't exist, you know, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, so although internet existed, but uh, what is called voice over IP, meaning voice over the internet, that didn't exist um, at this scale, like at the, at the scale of so easily doing it. Any other examples you guys, somebody can think of? Let me add people who are joining in. Okay, big, oh yeah, people have already put in things. Oh, sorry, let me read it quickly. Um, cloud computing, yeah, SharePoint, yeah, Zoom, yeah, it's a good example. Machine learning, yes, machine learning is also, it's quite old, but now it, now it can actually grow rapidly and can, there can be significant progress on it. And we'll talk about machine learning as well. Tic Tac, okay, that I don't know. Um, Microsoft Teams, yes, very much, uh, you know, with the sharing of, um, yeah, working on teams and collaboration. Google Meet, yeah, that didn't exist a few years ago. Uh, Microsoft Team, eBay, Big Data, Python and Aria, those are programming languages <clears throat> for data science. Uh, Miro, Kahoot, yeah, some of it maybe I don't know. Uh, it may be specific. Yeah, Alphabet is the is the parent company of Google, so yeah, that's they are they are the um, yeah they are they are sort of at the forefront of this. So. Um, yeah, what you see on the screen are some of the companies that are, of course, the um, biggest players in this area. You know, you see Amazon, you see Google, you see Facebook, um, you know, you see SAP. We talked a little bit about SAP, the information strategy second lecture, that this is one of the big companies that is producing applications that, that other companies you can use. You know, Microsoft, we talked about Salesforce as well. So yeah um yeah so that's kind of the trend and these are the biggest companies and they're kind of moving at really 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 fast pace so if you cannot keep up with them if you cannot sort of you know um you know understand what they're doing basically uh, your company will be out of business you know they, they they're just too fast uh what we will cover in the first lecture is uh these four these four um, uh, technologies. So we'll talk about cloud computing, which I think is the, the biggest change over the last maybe 15 years or so. And it's the, it's the thing that is making everything else possible. So things like Zoom, you know, things like Microsoft Teams that we talked about, things like um, Google Meet that we just talked about. Underlying all of this is something called cloud computing. So we'll talk a little bit about cloud computing. Oh, there's a lot of people waiting. Let me add all of them. Um, so, and then and we'll also talk about blockchain. We'll talk about blockchain, which is another uh, quite uh, uh, important technology. Um, okay, let me just see if everybody can join in. Okay, yeah. Um, Internet of Things, that's another big thing and, and you all will experience Internet of Things as well. Uh, you know, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about cybersecurity. That's another one. So these four technologies we'll talk about today. And then in the lecture number two, we will talk about robotic process automation, which is a lot about 
<clears throat> automation. We'll talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning, and we will talk about data analytics and so lecture two, and then in lecture three onward, we'll go dive uh, deeper into the data analytics and actually do some hands-on learning on it. So, yeah, maybe something I wanted to ask is, you know, what other latest technologies would you like to learn about? Is there something particular on your mind that you think, hey, professor, it'll be great if I could learn more about this or learn more about that? You know, please take a minute to type it in. Feel free to type in. Don't worry about you know whether it is actually um, you know a real technology or not. Yeah, data science. So we'll talk about uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So we'll talk about AI and ML, and that's basically that is the crust of data science. So we'll we'll cover that, Isa. Yeah. Data engineering. Okay, database management. You know, is not really a I would say it's not really like an emerging technology. It sort of exists for a long time, Abdullahi. So, uh, but we will talk about when we do the deep dive on the data and analytics part, you know, we will have to learn about how to manage a database or we'll have to learn a little bit about you know, what's important, what is new in that. Cybersecurity, yeah, we'll talk about cybersecurity. Uh, business intelligence, yeah, business intelligence is also a lot about data and analytics because Business intelligence is basically nothing but, you know, you want to give the business insights to be intelligent. You know, you want the business to understand what is happening and to basically react to what is happening. So a lot of that is done through data and analytics. So we'll talk about that. Yeah, Power BI is very much one of the uh, tools or softwares for data analytics, Abdullah. So yeah, we'll, we'll touch upon all of this. So, so that's good, you know. Um, Okay, let me go back. Um, let me go back. Okay, then let's dive into the first one, which is cloud computing, right? Um, so how many of you, of you have heard of the term cloud? Just type it in. Have you guys heard of the term cloud and cloud computing? IBM, yeah, well, IBM is one of the companies that provides cloud uh, services, that's correct. Um, okay, good, good, so so I, I see, you know, some of you have heard of it, so that's good, Abdullahi, thanks. So yeah, I would say, you know, it's very important to understand, this is one of the most important technologies to understand because this is the, um, how should I say, this is the foundation of everything you are seeing, right? It is a foundation of everything that you are seeing now. So the fact that we are able to call on Zoom and the fact that we can record this call and the, you know, it, and, it, and the recording is then made available to you, you know, you are not using a laptop to store this. I'm not, this recording is not being stored on my computer. It's not, you know, it's, it's taking space, but it is not being stored on my computer. It's being stored in the cloud, what we call the cloud. Uh, you know, um, the documents that you're using from, uh, like this presentation that you're seeing now, uh, you know, the presentation that you're seeing, which I posted in the classroom. Uh, again, it's not, uh, it's not being, you know, stored on my, uh, hey, can I suggest, please go on Let me just mute it. Um, let me just mute some participants. Oh, sorry. Um, so, yeah, one more person is left. Let me mute. Oh, why is he not muting? Uh, okay, that's that's some guest. Okay, hopefully they're they're muted. Um, yeah, please mute yourself if you're not if you don't have a question. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, what I was saying was that the fact that I can go to the slide and you can see this presentation, you know, it is not stored on my laptop. It is not. It is stored in what is called cloud. Um, and so it's, it's, it's the biggest disrupting trend. So if you, you must, you must understand what a cloud is and what cloud computing is. If you don't understand this, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you're missing out on something that is so critical to everything that is happening around us. So really, really important to pay attention and understand what cloud computing is. 
So cloud computing is, you know, in simple terms, in simple terms, it is making everything that we used to actually have physically available with us. So things like you could say, you know, in laptop, you used to have, I don't know if you people ever had that, but you know, you used, we used to have like a big CPU machine uh, and you know, the CPU needs to have a hard drive and it needs to have, you know, a network cables in it and it needs to have, you know, uh, processing power in it and if the processing power is low then you know your computer will not really work that fast etc etc right so um, uh, so everything that you can imagine about working with computers everything whether it is uh, you know if you're more technical you know a little bit about servers you know about databases we had people just mention about database you know networking uh, analytics intelligence everything that you can imagine about computing delivered over the internet or being done over the internet instead of being done on your own PC or laptop or your own home or your own network. That is what's cloud computing. And it is, it is revolutionary because it has changed the way companies um, do things. It has changed the way, um, you know, um, yeah, um, you know, these companies do things. So we'll talk about these companies, the three that you see their signs on. And it has a lot of benefits. There are a lot of benefits. You know, you don't need to own uh, the service before uh, before buying it. So, for example, you know, now I don't need to uh, like. For example, let's say I'm giving all these lectures to the information management master students, and you know, I only need as I begin the begin the semester, I only need like let's say what one GB of space. Let's just make that up. So I only need one G GB of space. Uh, you know, to store all my lecture notes and my files and my, you know, video recordings, etc. As the course, you know, goes ahead, you know, I do semester two, semester three, semester four, you know, I need more space. I need up to 10 GB maybe. And the, one of the biggest benefits is that like, for example, I don't need to buy or keep all the 10 GB today. I don't. I don't need to buy a big hard drive that has 10 GB storage. I kind of, you know, put it connected to my connected to my um, computer and then, you know, I am storing everything there. No, I can take, if I only need one GB today, I take one GB. If tomorrow I need one GB more, I can add that to it and I can keep it all on the internet. I don't need to keep it on my computer, which means that tomorrow, let's say if I'm traveling for work and I'm on, on Sunday, I'm in some other country and I don't have my laptop with me, that's fine. As long as I have access to internet, I can still do this class. I can still share all the notes with you. We can still look at the screen. It will look the same. Um, but I, you know, don't have anything that, you know, is on my laptop with me, for example. So all the things you can imagine about computers being delivered on the internet is a very simple way of thinking about cloud computing. Now, there are three big players in it, three big players. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of small players as well, uh, but there are three big companies. The first one is Microsoft, which has this service called Azure. You see it on the top, Azure. Uh, it's from Microsoft. It's the biggest, you know, it's one of the best and one of the biggest uh, cloud computing platforms. Then you have Amazon, and Amazon has something that is called Amazon Web Services, AWS. It, this is Amazon's um, cloud service. It is also very, very popular, very big. You know, this is number one, and Azure is number two. And then you have something here, which is actually the Google Cloud. Uh, maybe you recognize the colors. So this is Google Cloud. That is number three in terms of providing cloud services. So all the things that we are looking at now, like the slides, the Google Classroom, uh, you know, where I post the slides, et cetera, is all on Google Cloud. Um, so yeah, those are the three big players. Now, uh, yeah, can you give me an example of cloud computing that you use in everyday life? So just think about, just think of an example now that you hear a little bit about what cloud computing is, you know, post, post some example. Yeah, Google Drive, correct, that's correct. Cloud virtual computer, yeah, that's correct. Um, okay, I hope, um, Um, someone is uh, trying to join. Um, okay, what else is there? Let me see. Dropbox, yeah, absolutely. Dropbox, Gmail, Facebook. That's very right, Isa. Great, that's that's absolutely correct. So Gmail is cloud computing. Facebook, yeah, it's cloud computing. You don't need anything. You can store a lot of things in Facebook, but you don't have to store them on your laptop. It's just stored on the cloud. 
uh, OneDrive, which is Microsoft's, uh, you know, uh, you could say Google Drive kind of thing. Um, yeah, Skype, WhatsApp. Um, yeah, these things are, well, when you're sending messages, let's say when you're sending files over WhatsApp, like we sent, you know, some PDF files over WhatsApp. Yeah, those are being stored in the cloud. And so it's using the cloud computing service, absolutely. Um, uh, Telegram, I guess you meant, um, yeah, Telegram is a, sim a similar service as well, like WhatsApp. So yeah, that's good. Those are good examples. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I guess you guys understand, which is great. Um, so that's about cloud computing, right? And there's a link here, which you know you should go to. Um, so let's see if I can go to it now in uh, without the. Uh, I post, like, uh, you know, you, if you go to this link, and this is what I mean. So for the assignment for the next class, please go to the link for each of the technologies. There's going to be a link for each of the technologies. Please go there and read a bit more about about this, read about the benefits of it, you know, lower cost, global scale, uh, you know, faster speed, um, you know, better security. We'll talk about security as well in a second, et cetera. Um, and be prepared next time to come with some, you know, some examples and some further thoughts on it. Okay, let's move to technology number two, blockchain. How many of you have heard about blockchain? Um, can you, can you, yeah, Farhan, thanks, Firefox, similar to that, Google Classroom, yeah, good, good, these are all good examples. Yeah, Bitcoin is smile, that's good, that is an example of blockchain, yes. What other examples have you heard? Have you heard any other example, I think? This is the most popular, so I, I think, you know, it's, it's good, Ismail, this is the best example, to be honest. Have others heard about blockchain at least? Can you say yes or no? Uh, if you've heard of it, say yes. Post yes as a message if you've heard of blockchain. And if no, then just say no, that, so I know a little bit. Okay, that's good, okay. So some of, some of you have not heard about it. Okay, that's good. Then let me explain it a little bit. And some of you have heard about it. Okay, that's good. Let me explain a little bit about what blockchain is. So, so, so blockchain is basically a, you can say sort of a digital accounting system. You can think of it like that, although it has it can be used outside of the finance and accounting, and you know it's, it can be used outside of that space. But the uh, but the concept is easier to understand if you think of it in terms of finance or economic terms. So blockchain is sort of like a digital uh, accounting system that is on the internet and cannot be uh, manipulated, yeah? So for example, let's say, you know, um, you know you, you're in a company and, you know, and you know, your company buys and sells stuff. And so as you buy things, you have to record it that, hey, we have bought, sorry, we sold. Yeah, as you, so let's say you, as you buy raw materials, you have to record it in your you know, accounting system. Hey, we bought so-and-so raw materials and, you know, we, you know, it costs us this, this money. And then when you sell it to customers and you have to record it in the system as well, like, hey, we sold, you know, whatever, 10 units of, uh, you know, tea or, and it, or coffee to these people. And, you know, we kind of record the sales. But, you know, uh, it's the company that is doing it. And company can manipulate those numbers, right? They can say, hey, you know, an order was for, you know, we bought something for whatever, let's say, um, $10 and you can claim to put $20 on the books or if you sold something for $10, you can put $20 on the book. You know, of course that is illegal practice, but it happens, you know, you can manipulate. It is, a, you know, companies can still do that. Um, and of course, you know, and then there are fraud companies and they get caught in doing it and all of that, but, but companies can still do that. <coughs> and the system is not very, um, I would say, you know, secure in terms of ensuring that, hey, if if you actually really paid $10 for this thing that you buy as a raw material, it can only record $10. It's just not possible to record $20, for example. So that's an, that's an example with which you can think about this. So, uh, so, so blockchain is a technology where, you know, there are blocks. So every transaction becomes a block and you cannot break these blocks. And you cannot actually re how to, how should I say manipulate these blocks. So, for example, if I pay, uh, let's say someone in the class, let's say Isa, if I pay Isa ten dollars, 
and ESA pays up to like ten dollars, and that is let's say the uh, direction of transaction. Like I paid to him because I got something in return, and then ESA paid it to Abdullahi, and you know he got something in return, etc. This chain will be recorded as the transactions take place and you cannot actually go back and now erase it so for example i cannot now go back and say sorry but you know i don't want anybody else to know that i have paid isa ten dollars and i don't know what i bought for it i don't want you know or isa doesn't want anybody else to know that he paid up like ten dollars uh, no you cannot change it it is recorded now um and it is kind of you know it can be audited people can come and look at it you cannot you just cannot uh, uh you know change it you can add to it but you cannot change it and so it is a, a, a way of doing financial transactions in a way that an external authority is not needed so like banks uh you know may not be needed when you work with blockchain because because the the sole job of a bank is to ensure that hey you're the right person yeah we validate that you're the right person yeah and we'll keep your money with us and you know and they'll give it to somebody else let's say they loan out that money to some other person and say yeah you're the right person we'll loan you out and bank keeps all that information and becomes the authority that is you know making this transaction but with this technology now that i can confirm hey who am i loaning this money to oh i'm loaning it to let's say isa it just nobody can you know uh, disrupt that connection and and one thing i must mention that there is this uh, functionality called hash so hash means that, uh, the data is stored but it is stored in a very secure and uh, what is called cryptic manner so it is not possible for actually anybody to know that it is it was actually vinay who transferred money to isa they will know that two people transferred money but they will not know that it was me who transferred to to somebody um, unless and un, unless and until they're the authorized people to know about it so unless until they actually have what is called like a key they have the key to open this hash and only then they can see it so it it is both in terms of security you know pretty strong and both in terms of you know carrying transactions that cannot be manipulated with it's very strong so so it is it is a technology that is disrupting mostly finance industry uh, and you know the biggest example is indeed bitcoin which is a kind of a currency that you can use that is not validated or let's say that is not authorized by any of the banks right so whenever you use a currency like whenever you use dollars or you use you know uh, euros or you know you use your own currency in somalia it, there's always a bank there's a reserve bank or whatever the central bank of your country that is guaranteeing the validity of that a uh, money so if you see always on the note you know you will you know on the bank or on the currency note you'll see that there's a bank you know who's sort of saying hey i authorize that this money is indeed legal and all of that blockchain and bitcoin particularly doesn't need that you know it doesn't need any bank to intervene and so so it is it is going it is revolutionizing the finance industry and you will also see that um, companies like facebook and already in china companies like uh, wechat i mean tencent which is the owner of wechat which is like whatsapp in china you know they have introduced their own blockchain kind of currencies or they're trying to introduce their own blockchain like currencies because then they don't have to then people can share money on you know through the apps you know you can already still do that but you still have to have a bank account and you still have to keep the money in some bank and you know and through that you can transfer but once it actually uh once these these companies develop this technology a bit further they do need to get kind of you know let's say approval for it from the governments but once they have it then you don't need per se to have a bank account you can just have a facebook account and it is already also your bank bank account in a way so um anyway that's that's the uh, potential of blockchain um and again i have a link here please go to that link and read a bit more about this um and so you understand a little bit more uh, about blockchain it's again a big big um area uh, that is uh, yeah uh, one of the emerging emerging technologies okay let's move to the next one um this one is called internet of things have you guys heard about internet of things let's see some yes no please share that internet of things ismail abdullahi okay you have heard of it okay mohammed yes iot you've heard of it 
you've not heard okay Muhammad will talk about it as well don't no worries um, is all the things connected to internet that's correct Isa that's that's right so indeed it is all things uh, or let's say everything that is connected to um, internet um, is actually the you know it's it's let's say it forms the basis of IOT yeah Ismail that's great so it's like a house managed from remote just like you know basically just like you 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 know you you um, control your TV with a remote imagine if you could control everything with a remote right everything like indeed you know your freezer you know you press a button and the freezer door opens you know you kind of press a button and the microwave starts you press a button and the microwave kind of stops um you know you you press a button and the car is sort of you know coming to your door you know whatever you can imagine so so it's just like it's, it's a very good example yeah like curtains can go up and down you, know, you just press a button those things already exist right so the tv with the remote exists for like 30 40 years uh, same with you know the curtains kind of exist yeah, lights are new, so you know, uh, switching on and off light with just your voice command, and you know, not actually going and touching the switch, but just saying, "Hey, light on, light off," and it does it. You know, those things are all actually dependent on what is called Internet of Things, which is basically again nothing but your devices. Let's say you know your devices, like like you can see here, a washing machine or a bulb or a cooking stove, you know, or, or fans, you know, um, or your, your grocery items, you know, your, uh, it could even be like your medicines, you know, um, of course your laptop, computer, etc. It's nothing but all of these things connected to the internet and connected to the cloud. And what it does is that, you know, it, 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 it provides a mechanism to basically control and get these devices to do the things that you want them to do without needing to touch them uh, or without needing to, you know, physically actually be near them. And it is all again possible. I mean, this is Internet of Things is abs absolutely only possible because of cloud computing. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, let's say the one of the um, strong examples of cloud computing in action, like how does it actually make a difference so that you can do so many things on the internet um, and, and all the uh, computer hardware is actually now part of the internet software in a way. So, um, so it basically refers to a lot of different physical devices, you know, connected to the internet, everything is collecting and sharing data. Um, you know, it's impossible, it's possible to connect, you know, a small thing as your medicine pill to aeroplanes. Um, you know, it is is making the fabric of the world around us more smarter and more responsive. So, like, you know, um, if you are connected, if you are, you know, if you walk walk into the supermarket, the supermarket may already actually highlight the items that you generally buy because it knows you, it knows what you bought last time, it can relay all that information as you walk through the supermarket. You know, I mean, that kind that's kind of thing that is possible. Um, you know, so yeah, that's the that the um, yeah, it's, it, indeed. So thermostats, you know, automatic thermostats, you know, that you can control uh, smart devices. And in most cases, there are like lights. Generally, lights are smart devices. Uh, I mean, th that's the most common smart device that's there. Um, yeah, so good. Uh, you guys already shared the example, so that's good. You know, please again go to the link. And maybe one more image here to share, which is, yeah, this is actually a good. Uh, way of thinking about in internet of things so you have a device you know you have a network uh, it could be a wireless network you know so the so from the device the device is connected to the network you know it has got internet on it it is connected to the cloud meaning you know it can store information on the internet somewhere where it's authorized and then you can do analytics on it so you can do hey you know for example like how many milk uh, cartons are there in the fridge you know every time uh, the milk carton goes uh, uh, less than one, you know, please order new milk carton. And that's like, you can program it and you can sort of monitor it and you can sort of, you know, uh, yeah, you can sort of, you know, program these things through analytics. And then you have a user interface on your phone, whether it's on your phone or maybe it's on some other kind of a display, you know, like a monitor display in your home, you know, there's just like a panel where you can see this. So this is like a good, yeah, uh, the components of IoT.
So hopefully that helps everybody understand what Internet of Things is. Um, let me continue further. Okay, the fourth technology. Um, is there a question? Is it, does anybody has a question? No, okay. Um, yeah, please uh, go on mute if you're not um, asking a question. Okay, cybersecurity. Okay, that's how many of you have heard of cybersecurity? Let's see. Have you heard of cybersecurity or let's say the, you know, the cyber attacks kind of thing? Yeah, Mohammed, thanks for sharing. So yeah, cyber attacks, right? Very common nowadays, very common. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, let's say that's, um, you know, that is another, somebody's not able to join. That's another, um, let's say, very fast developing technology. Yeah, securing communication or more secure communication. Ismail, that's correct. So yeah, this is more, um, yeah, this is also very fast growing kind of an area or let's say one of the emerging technologies because, because so much information is now going through the internet uh, and you saw the cloud computing thing. So, so much information is now being put on the internet and stored there. You know, we literally are not, basically, if you want, we don't need to keep everything on our laptop. We can just leave everything, in, you know, on, on the cloud with Dropbox, with Google Drive, you know, we use, um, you know, whatever, Facebook, WhatsApp on the, on the cloud, you know, we don't need to keep anything physically stored with us. But what this also means is that, you know, it's uh, becoming more riskier uh, that your stuff can get stolen, you know, it can get locked, it can get corrupted um, by cyber attacks. Um, you know, so cybersecurity is the practice of protecting the systems, networks, and programs from digital attacks. These attacks are usually aimed at accessing and, and destroying sensitive information or, you know, extorting money from users, you know, um, there are quite some viruses uh, or, you know, quite some uh, cyber attacks where, you know, they will lock your file. So let's say you have an important file that has information about, I don't know, you know um, maybe about your, um, you know, any property that you own or land that you own or sort of a, you know, shop that you have and, you know, it's the documents related to that and it will just lock that file and it, it will just either, it will not open it. It will actually, you know, put a timer that, you know, this file will actually destroy itself in whatever, five minutes or whatever, 10 minutes if you don't pay us a certain amount. So, extorting, uh, you know, money from users, you know, this is becoming uh, more and more or is actually growing. And so, uh, this is another area which is there's a lot of development happening, a lot of de development is happening in this space. And again, a very, you know, an area if you want to go in, it, it, it has a really good potential, you know, so if you go in security space, so this will be called, this will be called IT security space. Uh, let me put somebody on mute. Um, I will actually, next time I'll make sure um, everybody's muted when they come in. Uh, hey, not able to yeah. meet this person. Okay, sorry, I'll ask him to. Uh, okay, uh, that's fine. Um, uh, hopefully, you can still hear me. So, um, let's see, can I not? Okay, yeah, I think it's it's. Yeah, it's muted. That's good. So, yeah, so that's about cybersecurity. Um, like I said, so it's, it's, it's a growing area. If you get a chance to work in the security space, you know, IT security space, please consider it. It is, it is a great space. I mean, it, has, it is very technical, um, but it is, uh, yeah, it's going to stay forever. I mean, because we will just put more and more things on internet. So, uh, this will be a challenge. And, and if you think about like, what are the most common cybersecurity threats for businesses, you know, uh, they're actually organized crime groups. So there are organized hackers, you know, who are attacking companies to steal confidential information, you know, competitors do that. So, you know, you know, uh, the, comp your competitors of the business will actually try to steal your information through different 
you know, uh, hacking techniques. Sometimes it could be legitimate, sometimes not, not legal, sometimes legal. You know, hackers, you know, terrorists, you know, there's, a, there's indeed, you know, a, a lot of this internet um, uh, capabilities are used also by terrorists to actually, you know, figure out, you know, um, yeah, uh, what information is where, you know, what can be helpful to them, et cetera. You know, foreign governments have been accused of also doing, um, you know, the uh, you know, uh, cyber attacks, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's an area that is uh, fast growing, important to uh, be aware of. And hence you will see, you know, many times you will see like in WhatsApp also it says, you know, messages are encrypted. Means, you know, messages uh, cannot be uh, broken or, or seen by other parties. Um, uh, so, you know, that's when it says that meaning, you know, it's actually referring to the security of the application. And if you know, I don't know if some of you used it or not, but Zoom had a big issue as well where, you know, the conference calls will get disrupted and you know some you know and 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 bad things will sort of start to show up on the screen etc and that is an example of a cyber security or a cyber attack so you're in a zoom call but then you know it is it because the security of zoom calls were not that good you know there are attacking groups that will just attack and disrupt the calls that was very common actually in March and april um yeah exactly yeah the Don donald trump election from 2016 uh, yeah, so that's a very good example where, you know, there's a, yeah, indeed accusation that Russia, Russia sort of, you know, interfered in the election by, you know, um, you know, attacking and figuring out more information uh, and things like that. Isa, Omar, very good. Yeah, that, that is correct. So, yeah, that was the fourth and the last, um, uh, you know, technology I want to share a bit more about. Um, uh, yeah, maybe questions. Are there questions, you know? Feel free to ask me questions. Um, we will cover, like I said, in the next class, we will cover three more, um, um, you know, technologies which you, you need to learn a bit more about, like the robotic process automation. So, which is about, you know, all the automation that you're seeing um, around you. Uh, then AI and machine learning, <clears throat> we'll cover that, which is uh, in also linked to data science. And we'll talk about data analytics in the in the last, and then we will pick it up for more deep dives in the follow-up lecture. So that's the idea. Um, what I want to suggest to you is that please, indeed, uh, each of the four technologies a link to it. You know, please take some time over the next week to look at the link, read a little bit more about it. Hopefully, this gives you some good understanding of the you know the four technologies we talked about. So cloud computing, Internet of Things, blockchain, and um, cybersecurity. Um, and then, you know, the assignment for the next time is, you know, think about three applications of these technologies in your context. So think about it in your context. And it can be, of course, be the same example that we largely talked about today, but try to think a little bit different and see if you can come up with some other examples um, of these technologies. As you read the link, you know, you will yeah. in the link, there may be some examples, so you can have a look yeah. there, or as you, you know, what read the link that? and understand a bit more about the uh, technology, mm -hmm. then you can sort of, you know, yeah, think on your own a little bit as well. Yeah. Yes, in, uh, 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 Muhammad Abdullah, that's correct. Um, encryption is part of what I will say security, uh, not cyber security per se. Cyber security is a specific area which is about um, security over the internet. But encryption is needed even if you are, let's say, not on the internet, but you are still, let's say, in kind of like a network, meaning, uh, let's say, a company you know, has its own network where people can share files amongst themselves. And so they would also still want to encrypt. But yeah, encrypt means that it, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a good example is like this. So encrypt means that you have a house, and in your house there are things. Encrypt basically means you're putting a lock on the house. So you, you leave the house, you go somewhere, you know, you put a lock on it. And only the people with the keys, and that could be yourself, but also be your family, only they can come and open it unless, until they have a key. Yeah, legal cyber attack, good, good point. Uh, Abdi Hakim, sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, you know, Abdi Hakim, it's a good, uh, it's a good point. There are actually um, a legal hacking uh, that's allowed. There's actually legal, uh, maybe I will not call it cyber attack. Maybe that was a bit wrong, but um, the right 
thinking is that companies have a department in their co own company that is actually always trying to attack their own company's infrastructure to see where are the gaps because how else will you you know protect your uh, you know your your network so you need to actually be one step ahead yeah ethical hacking is the right or white collar hacking is the right term ismail that's correct yeah so for example in my company we have a cybersecurity department uh, and in the cybersecurity department there's a small team that continuously actually tries to attack our own systems and and they will also actually for example send you know uh, uh, like say uh, wrong emails to the employees to see if hey if somebody's actually trying to open it and trying to uh, do things that we have actually educated them not to do for example you know, not to open emails from people you don't know not to open any attachments that you don't trust etc you know so we have these kind of basic rules but how do you understand whether this is working or not working it is by actually internally testing it right and so that's that's the kind of thing that's at least in a company a bit legal and then all, of course the governments try to do the same at the government level so they would be actually you know trying to attack um you know uh you know facebook you know apple system just trying to check hey just trying to understand you know are we at the boundaries of having good security or not okay what is the different i see some questions so let me try to answer those so ethical hacking we did white color we did sakaria has a question on premise means you can't access out of the network range and clouding means you can access anywhere you are but sometimes on premise you can access anywhere how can we differentiate between yeah that's a good that's a very good question sakaria so on premise means that it is you can think of it like this on premise would mean in your house right so it's in your house basically and and cloud would mean somewhere out there you know it can actually be on the real cloud as well so it's like on the cloud now of course even if it's in your house you can access things um, so for example um, there's a phone in your house right let's assume that you can still call that phone if you have the phone number um, right if you have your own phone number so uh, on premise resources can also be accessed but it can only be accessed by people who are authorized to access it meaning you know it cannot be accessed by anybody on the internet um, so we have something called virtual private network vpn you know through which you can you know it's a private network meaning you know it sort of you know it it builds a link uh, and only the people who have a uh, write up username and password will actually be able to go in and access things so so stuff is on premise but can still be accessed over the internet in a more secure manner uh, but when we say it's cloud meaning it's really out there in the cloud it is with one of the public clouds and that maybe the difference is more public cloud and private cloud those are the terms um yeah those are the terms that are common under cloud computing so private cloud means you know it's your own setup you as a company you can set this up but it is over the internet still you know it still uses internet so people can still work from home and access it but only the people who are allowed actually can cloud me a uh, public cloud means it's like a gmail gmail is not your private cloud right but a, but a company's email would be your own private cloud for example right so that's that's a way to differentiate it sakari hope that helps to understand what is the difference between tracking used by telecommunication and cybersecurity actually good question um well the telecom companies can track a lot of information and um you know it is um and so i don't know if you heard about it or not but there's a big um you know debate around using chinese telecom um equipment in us for the 5g network so now we are on all on 4g network uh, which is you know the network on which the telecoms work uh, and we will you know every every country is trying to move towards a 5g network which is let's say the next level of uh, network um you know uh, available and um and so for 5g network uh, one of the biggest players that makes the infrastructure needed for it like you can imagine all the switches and all the transformers or you know all the towers and you know all of that <coughs> you know all of that is a chinese company called huawei and there was a big debate and i think us still kind of you know united states still said that you know, we're not going to use huawei for 5g network because indeed uh, you can build in things that are not traceable uh, but can be used for cyber attacks and so um, yeah that is how you know telecom companies have a lot of details so all your network passwords and you know all your 
like like you know i just sent the link of zoom over whatsapp right to everybody i mean if people can can break into and understand uh, you know the network uh, whoever is actually transferring that information to you also has those details it's only a matter of actually having the right password to open it and see you know what was actually the link for this call and then join this link so the telecom equipment plays a key role because that is still the physical thing through which all the internet traffic is moving right okay sandboxing is something about um, creating a sandbox which is like a playing area or like a like you know a, 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 a piece just to play around with and play the technologies around with etc good magic and bad magic they're like that okay uh, yes we hear about it how can cybersecurity users identify the digital attack? Okay, that's the that's the key, that is the key thing, right? Wow. How do you identify the digital attack? And actually, the mo the even more important thing is you want to identify the attack before it happens, right? Because it's too late if you identify the attack when it actually happened, because it's already late. Because you know, it just takes like seconds for the attack to do what it has to do right because it's just like it's just like you know if you are gonna join the call it just takes you a second to join the call after you have the have the details of joining it so the key thing is uh, how do you detect that somebody's trying to come in the moment they're in they're already in then they've already done the damage so so generally um, we have uh, in the cybersecurity team, there'll be like two teams generally. So there'll be a team that is doing what is called like, uh, you know, there is called like threat management. That's what it's called. Like they're assessing the threats, like, hey, what is potentially going to happen? They're scanning everything, everything that is coming in, everything that's going out. They're trying to see, hey, what trend? Hey, somebody just shared a confidential file to someone who was not authorized, for example, that's an example, right? And, and then they'll immediately go and see, oh, is this person they shared, was it authorized? Oh, it, it didn't seem like it's authorized, but it's kind of connected to that company. Okay, we do business with that company, that's good. So they all kind of, they're scanning. So one part is that one team is kind of scanning all the time and actually figuring out a tag before it happens. And then there's another team, which is called incident team, which is actually uh, looking at things that look like Oh, the attack just happened already, and they will try to neutralize it. Meaning, you know, they try to just shut off the network of that area of that piece. And so, so like in my company, there are attacks happening on it all the time, all the time. There are attacks happening on it all the time, and and there is, you know, these two teams are continuously, you know, battling and switching things off, shutting things off. So, you know, um, the good news is that you know we have not had a very big attack which was you know uh, yeah which could sort of you know lead to confidential information being leaked or you know private information or privacy information being leaked etc but attacks are happening all the time and so yeah that is the job of a cybersecurity professional to actually uh, you know work on these two areas either you are in the area to detect the threat or you're in the area to actually fix the threat Okay, let's another question. I, I'm really happy with the question. So that's great. Uh, that really helps me to also actually see that you guys are understanding, you know, what I shared. So that's great. Please let the questions co keep coming. And also, you know, I, I really encourage everybody to ask questions. Okay, on premise can be moved into AWS or Microsoft Azure. Before renting a space for these cloud computing technologies, we were uh, we were using on-premise and still access out of the network and using AWS and Microsoft Azure, still we access anywhere. Therefore, what is the advantage of using? Okay, that's a good question. So, um, you know, a biggest advantage is that when you have on-premise, it's like what I just mentioned. Like, let, so let's assume I'm going to take the class, uh, you know, I'm going to teach this uh, master program for the all four semesters, right? Now, if I have to do that, then I need to first think if I have to, if, if I'm if I'm let's say going to use on premise technology, let's assume that then I need to already think how much space will I need for the whole year, not just for tomorrow's lecture or for that next week's lecture. I want to think how much space are we going to need for all the year, how much processing power I need when we do all the deep dives of uh, of the data analytics that we just talked about. You know, I need to think about it already and I need to estimate and I need to actually buy the resources that are needed for it right now already, because that's how on-premise works. You need to get all these resources. And, and the, the benefit of AWS or Azure is that you can buy as you go and you pay as you use, meaning you know, 
you only pay for what you use. And if tomorrow I need, like tomorrow I say, oh, I suddenly need 10 GB because I'm going to do a very long lecture, you know, whatever, like for eight hours and it's going to, you know, become such a big file and I need it. You know, if, on, if in the on-premise scenario, I did not foresee that, I'm now stuck because I have something that is that did not take into account this flexibility that I will need tomorrow. And so, uh, you know, so the, so, the, so the advantages of cloud computing is flexibility, paying for only what you use, you know, scalability. So for example, if I only do business in, in, in Somalia, but tomorrow I also want to do business in, in uh, United States, you need to get your on-premise network to be able to connect with the United States customers and the network there, right? Whereas Microsoft Azure, AWS, they're already connected there. So let's say if you have a business that is working well in Somalia, you want to scale it to America, you can easily do it if your infrastructure was Azure or AWS. Okay, that's great. Hopefully that, that clarifies, uh, Sakarya. Um, ESA, it's better to take one technology other than more. Uh, it's better to take one technology rather than more like Azure. Actually, it is always better to not have one technology only because then the challenge is that you are actually locked into that technology, meaning you cannot actually, you know, move out of it. You're a little bit locked, you know, you're kind of fully dependent on Azure then. So what companies generally do is that they will always have like two or th even three main cloud providers, and they will move around depending on some, for example, some applications will be on one cloud provider, some applications will be on another cloud provider. And they do that just to also have like a little bit of a tension in the system, a little bit of competition in the system, because if everything is on Azure, then, you know, yeah, Azure is, if, you know, yeah, you kind of, you know, you have to pay to Azure, whatever Azure wants, you know, that's, that's kind of a setup. So it comes down to also financial, um, competition, also risk, you know, if Azure systems go down, then everything is down for your business, right? So you need to balance that a bit. To access the system, still both technologies, you need to have credentials. That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, so that part is not different. The difference is in flexibility. The difference in, is in scalability. The difference is in paying for what you use. Uh, secure. Well, maybe one difference is that if it's on premise, you can make it as secure as you want, right? You can say, okay, my system is financial system. I want to make it really, really, really secure. Whereas on cloud, like on the public, uh, let's say on AWS and Azure, there is just fixed security offerings you have. You cannot say that, hey, I want to make it super, super, super secure. No, they'll say we only have security in these three options. You know, and this is our highest option and we cannot offer you more than that. So yeah, it is like actually buying a service. You don't get, you know, that's just a standard, you know, you only get what is standard available. Okay, I see all questions around cloud computing, cybersecurity. Does the class go cybersecurity learning? Guys, are you practicing advanced networking security? Okay, that's something to discuss within the team, I suppose. Uh, and maybe, maybe I can request the student representative. So please, you know, after this class, I see a lot of questions, which is all great. Uh, I suggest, you know, have a, a quick chat amongst yourself on WhatsApp. And if you think you want to have one class detailed on cloud computing, or maybe one class detailed on cybersecurity, uh, we can also do that and then we can dive a bit deeper into cloud computing and we can talk about different options and we can talk a little bit about if you guys want to get into the cloud computing, meaning if you want to become a professional in that area, which I will highly recommend, you know, I really, really suggest data analytics is one part. Cloud computing is, is, is also very, very big space and a lot of jobs are going to come in that space. So, um, you know, think about it amongst yourself and talk about it amongst yourself. And then I'm happy to take the feedback, you know, to say that, hey, let's have one or two more classes on cloud computing so that we, we, we all can understand what it is. And then also I can refer to, you know, where to go for further learning such that you can have a certification in it or, you know, you can have a, a more, let's say, like a, a like some sort of a professional uh, certification on it, right? So. Yeah, so we'll definitely do data analysis in detail, um, Kaltuma. So we'll do that. That is for sure. Like that's where I shared the, um, you know, the the course um, sessions for for this one. So we will go into data analytics in detail for sure. Yeah, but I suggest please have a conversation amongst yourself. If there's like 
out of let's say 30 people you know if 10 or 15 of the you want a cloud computing class i'm happy to do that yeah uh i think that is it for today um yeah i will you know the the slides are posted hopefully you all can access it and uh yeah, please go through the links, understand things on your own as well. And then next time we will start with a bit of assignment or a little bit of, a, you know, um, reviewing the assignment from this class. Cloud computing is part of emerging technology, but not all. Yes, correct. Cloud computing is just the, one of the emerging technologies. Yeah. When we talk of art, but it is, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that it is the foundation to everything else everything else artificial intelligence machine learning data analytics it is the foundation for everything else because if we cannot move everything you can do uh, you know on your laptop to the internet which is what the cloud computing does if you cannot do that then you just don't have the foundation to do any of the other things of course you can still do let's say you know data analysis on a spreadsheet or excel yes you can still do that but the fact that uh, data analytics is growing so much and the fact that artificial intelligence is growing or machine learning is growing so much is because now we have cloud computing in place we have a mechanism to store you know gigabytes and terabytes of data we have a mechanism to have enormous processing power available to everybody it is not just available to like supercomputers you know in the past we used to have supercomputers which only like uh, every country will only have like two supercomputers or 10 supercomputers like U united states will have 10 supercomputers and only they have the power to run all this you know calculations that are needed for artificial intelligence no now that power is available to everybody and that and the only way it is possible is through the cloud computing so yeah so i i still am a very strong supporter of cloud computing and i suggest you know it's, a, it's something you guys should also learn more about but we will do more deep dive into data analytics for sure all right thank you very much um yeah and yeah i i, I suggest have a good evening and i'll see you on wednesday for the information strategy class all right thank you hello last day, sir. hey is there a question yeah do you have an uh, assignments today yeah go ahead yeah uh, do you have or do you say you have assignments today uh, well, the assignment I have for t today yes, that you should, yeah, just, just just read the links and think about three applications of these technologies. So there's, no, there's nothing like, I would not say there's like a case study kind of assignment. Yeah? Thank you, sir. It's not a case, yeah, I would suggest just read through the links and just understand a little bit more about these technologies because I think that it's important to just absorb a little bit more on it. Okay? Abdullahi, that's good? Okay, thank you. And thank you, I'll, I will end the call and I will post the recording once it's available, I will post it on YouTube channel. Um, yeah, maybe one very quickly, people were able to access the recording, uh, right? A recording from the information strategy, lecture two? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, okay, smile, thank you for sharing. Okay, perfect, then I will end this call here and then yeah, I, I um, see you guys on Wednesday. Okay, thank you.